Hi there, this is the last video in this introductory lesson on fiscal policy and we're going to be tying together some of the things we've been looking at so far and linking it in with your knowledge of aggregate demand and aggregate supply analysis. So if we take a start, we're going to break down the types of government spending and look at their impact on AD and AS. Starting with government current, current spending, so that recurrent spending, day-to-day -day spending, that directly influences aggregate demand, AD, and you can see that highlighted there on the formula, government spending is a component of AD. Flipping now to capital spending, this can influence both aggregate demand and aggregate supply. In other words, it can affect both uh, real GDP directly and our potential GDP. Aggregate demand, if you remember, uh, has the uh, components there, C plus I plus G plus X minus M. Capital spending affects both I and G. Around 25% of all investment spending in the UK is carried out by the public sector. Furthermore, if the public sector decides to invest more, remember for economists, the definition of investment is the uh, addition to capital. So if we have more capital in our economy, we also increase long run aggregate supply. Flip side of the fiscal policy coin here is taxation. And I'm going to break it down into direct tax and indirect tax. So let's take a look firstly at the impact of direct taxes on AD and AS. Direct taxes can influence aggregate demand and they can sometimes influence long run aggregate supply. Let's start by looking at income tax and wealth taxes such as capital gains tax or inheritance tax. These affect disposable income and confidence and that has a direct effect on the level of consumer spending which is of course a component of AD. Corporation tax affects business profits and um, business profits, along with uh, borrowing from banks, for example, is a major source of funding for business investment. So corporation tax directly affects investment, which is also a component of aggregate demand. Moving on to the impact on aggregate supply, long run aggregate supply, income tax rates and corporation tax rates affect incentives. So income tax rates directly affect the incentive to work. Corporation tax rates directly affect the incentive for businesses to set up, grow and invest. So that affects long run aggregate supply as well. Indirect taxes, often a source of error for students in their A-level economics exams. And that's because indirect taxes such as VAT influence short run aggregate supply. Okay, don't play around with the aggregate demand curve here focus on the impact of short run aggregate supply. And that's because indirect taxes we treat as a business cost. So we've got some graphics on the next two slides. And it's worth just taking your time to read through these uh, slowly and carefully, making your own notes if, you, if you'd like to. This first graphic shows the relationship between taxation and AD. And you might want to just pause the video to take your time and work through that. And then similarly, pause the video and take your time to work through this graphic on the relationship between tax and aggregate supply. So let's put all of this into practice. Here is a task for you. Your task is to read the fiscal policy action in the left hand column and then decide whether it affects a D short run aggregate supply or long run aggregate supply, taking care to indicate whether it's a rise or a fall or no change. Pause the video while you do this. You could complete this on a rough piece of paper or on the accompanying downloadable worksheet. And then when you're done, restart the video and check your answers against mine. So here are my answers. Just take the time to pause and check your answers against mine. If there are any you aren't completely sure about, do check in with your teacher. So some more key terms here. Expansionary fiscal policy, this leads to an increase in real GDP. So it's any fiscal policy leading to an increase in real GDP. Generally, it's to do with rising government spending and or lower tax rates. Conversely, 
contractionary fiscal policy is about a decrease in real GDP. So it's any combination of fiscal policies that decrease real GDP. So falling government spending and or rising tax rates. My little exam tip here is to be as specific as you can be about the precise nature of government spending and or the nature of changes in taxes. So don't just say rising G or falling T. Tell an examiner exactly what type of government spending is changing and exactly which taxes are changing. And that allows you to just develop your chains of analysis in more depth. Okay, so just a little aside here, just thinking about education and health spending. It's worth just taking a moment um, to just pause the, uh, the video at this point and just take a look at how education spending and healthcare spending could affect AD and AS. Uh, nothing particularly difficult on here. It's just, you know, worth taking a few moments to look through that because it will help you with a task we're going to finish off with in just a moment. Okay, so our final task in this video lesson is to practice analytical chains. And I've got one that I've prepared for you before you get to have a go yourself. And we're looking here at the impact of lower corporation tax on businesses. So just have a look at how I've built this analytical chain. So I'm going to start off by telling uh, the examiner what it is that's been happening. The government cuts the rate of corporation tax. Businesses keep a larger percentage of their profits. This increase in post-tax profitability may lead to a rise in planned investment. This can be by both domestic and overseas businesses. Increased capital spending is an injection into the circular flow, which causes AD to rise. At this point, it might be a great idea to draw yourselves an ADAS diagram. This creates a multiplier effect on AD, output and employment. So again, if you were drawing a diagram, you might want to do a further additional shift of AD to the right. Creates even greater incentives for businesses to increase investment. And that could lead long run aggregate supply to increase as well. We could tie that up by linking it in specifically to the impact on GDP or inflation and the price level or employment or anything else that we have been asked to look at by the examiner. But it's really important to get these step by step analytical chains into your exam answers. OK, so here is the written task to finish off this online lesson. And we're going to be practicing analytical chains in relation to fiscal policy. So in the box on the left headed changes to fiscal policy, I've suggested four possible fiscal policy actions. In the right hand box, I have outlined four possible impacts on the economy. Your task is to choose one item from the left hand box, so one fiscal policy, and choose one impact from the box on the right. Choose any, mix and match, it's fine. And your task is to write an analytical chain to connect those two key terms. You can use the corporation tax uh, example as a guide. When you've done that, choose a different pairing and repeat the exercise. You could do that as many times as you like. And then I suggest that you submit your work to your teacher for assessment.